We are going live now to the National Assembly in Abuja, where the Nigerian Senate is set to continue with the screening of the ministerial nominees forwarded last week by President Bola Ahmed Tinubu. Let's take a listen to the process. For the senatorial district of Enugu East, in Enugu State, out of personal and national considerations, I voluntarily stepped down for Chief G. Mwobodi. And today, Mr. President of the Federal Republic of Nigeria and Commander in Chief, President Ahmed Bolatinibu, GCFR, has given me another real privilege to be here as Minister Nomini from Enugu State. The only way to show my gratitude to Mr. President and the country is to serve with commitment and integrity in assisting the government to provide security and welfare to Nigerians as stated in Chapter 2 of 1999 Constitution. Fundamental objectives and directive principles of state policy. I pledge to serve Nigeria with commitment and integrity, drawing from my experiences as an entrepreneur in hospital services, oil and gas, agriculture, and construction. In politics over the years, I've displayed sacrifice, tolerance, and uh, inclusiveness. I am a true and detribalized Nigerian with investments in the north and south of Nigeria. I also have great respect for the legislature as the arm of government, good governance, and democratic practice. I thank you all very sincerely for the honor of my appearance before the hallowed chamber, and I respectfully I respectfully look forward to being cleared by this distinguished Senate. God bless all of us. Thank you. Mr. President, distinguished colleagues, I want to make a brief uh, comment on the person standing before us, Chief Uchenaji. Chief Uchenaji, like we all know, is a visionary, a visionary industrialist, oil and gas expert, a pro-democracy activist, this young man, at a very young age, was detained by Abacha. This young man, he won a senatorial seat. He was senator-elect in 1999, but because of his loyalty, he bequitted that seat for Chief Jim Wobodo. He also, he was also the gubernatorial candidate of APC in 2023. I urge my distinguished colleagues to please give him the honor of bowing and go. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. President. I am still Osita Ngu. I'm here on behalf of the people of Enugu West. Uh, Mr. President, thank you also for the privilege to speak about and to 
the nominee from the coal city, Chief Uche Geoffrey Naji. We call him Mwakibie. Mr. President, when the president announced Mwakibie as the nominee from Enugu State, the state was happy. And the three senators from Enugu, even though none of us is from his party, are all in support. Mr. President, he's not just a politician. In fact, we know him less as a politician because he's a philanthropist, an industrialist, and in several sectors that he touched, he opened up his business. He's a, a managing director in about five companies that are doing extremely well. He is one of the nominees of Mr. President that has distinguished himself in the private sector. He is a construction expert. He is a health expert in the aspect of health infrastructure. He is an oil and gas magnate, distinguished himself in agriculture. And here, he is here in this hollow chamber to be confirmed. Your Excellency, Mr. President, he is the immediate past governorship candidate of the All Progressive Congress. Even though I worked for PDP and we defeated him, but it's not because he's not capable. We know he's also competent. In 1999, you can imagine someone at a young age to win senatorial election in Enugu State, or in AD, it wasn't fashionable to be in Alliance for Democracy in the Southeast as at that time. But Chief Unnaji won as a senator, was a senator elect under the platform of um, Alliance for Democracy. Mr. President, if we go by our tradition, a senator elect declared by INEC is almost a senator. So I will support what my distinguished colleague said here, that Mwakibye, with the qualities that we have mentioned, is qualified to bow and go. Mr. President, thank you for the opportunity. Thank you, this chamber. Distinguished Senator Goje. Thank you, Mr. President. I remain Mohammed Nanji Mogoje, representative. Mr. President, I stand to strongly recommend Uche Naji for confirmation as a minister of the Republic of Nigeria. I know him very well for the past 25 years. The tribalized Nigerian like said by one of the speakers, he established businesses all over the country. I know he has businesses here in the north. He has, he has been doing business with many northerners. He has employed them. Some are his partners. He's a good Nigerian. He is also very meticulous, very sincere and honest. And therefore, when I saw his name, I was very elated. And I'm happy for whatever ministry Mr. President takes him to him. He will do very well, and I'm sure that he will not disappoint us. For, zero, for this reason, he may not be a senator even though he was senator-elect. I was also I was a senator-elect in 1998, but because Abacha died, I could not call myself senator. <laughs> so, but, so I know what he meant to suffer. For example, to go through elections, to finance election, to win the election, only waiting for, for swearing. At least, as Osita said, he is near the thing. Even if he's not there, he's very close to becoming a senator. So for this reason, Mr. President, I urge my colleagues to endorse and confirm this very good nominee, a very good diatabalized Nigerian, and a committed philanthropist, and a good businessman. Thank you very much. Thank you, Mr. President. The civil senator, Darlington. Thank you, the President of the Senate and their colleagues. My name is Darlington 
more culture. I speak for the entire Nigeria, but Abia Central in particular. Mr. President of CNET and my dear colleagues, I'm happy that we have Uche Joe friend Naji ask him for us to clear him. And I thank God he's going to feature prominently by the special grace of God. So, at this point of our nation, economy, we need this kind of young men that are very vast in all areas of operation. He's vast in the industry area, industrial area, oil and gas, construction, health, which means if we find him in the National Executive Council, he will brainstorm effectively and make the necessary contributions. And I know quite well that at this point, we need people that can think out of the box to see how our economy will move towards the right direction. And I'm sure that your friend Naji will feature and do that exactly well. By the special grace of God also, I know that his younger brother, who presently is a member of the House of Representatives, who is doing well there, making us proud, will actually guide my right in terms of legislative impute to take the right decision look into the necessary laws, if he find himself in any of the ministries, and he will guide me aright, and so that he will have a perfect result. Therefore, I call on my colleagues to read him between the lines, and let's clear him for him to represent his state and entire Nigeria in offering the best that will move our country to the highest, uh, greater heights. Thank you, Mr. Senior President. Chairman, public petition. Mr. President, my name is Okechuku Ezia. I represent the great people of Enugu North Senatorial Zone. The nominee before us is from my state, and I will not want to waste the, the time of this distinguished Senate. <clears throat> Other speakers have uh, said all positives about him. We all support his uh, candidature, and I would urge my colleagues to please allow the nominee to take a bow. But before I close, uh, Mr. President, I want to make a point here. I want to draw your attention to section 14, subsection 3 of the Constitution of the Federal Republic of Nigeria. It states, sir, the composition of the government or the federation or any of its agencies shall recognize and reflect the federal character and need to promote national unity and also to command national loyalty, ensuring that there shall be no predominance of persons from a few states or from a few ethnic or other sectional groups in the government and its agencies. The point I'm making, I'm not saying that any state is not represented. The point I'm making, in 1999, Enugu state has produced eight ministers, none from my senatorial zone. Please. Yes, yes, yes. yes. It's important I need to say what, what affects my senatorial zone. Please, Mr. President, sir, as the government is going to nominate more candidates, I expect that my senatorial zone will be recognized. Thank you very much, Mr. President, and for the opportunity. Thank you. Uh, 
Uh, this new senator is there. And you are the chairman of public petitions. And you are, you are yourself a petitioner. <laughs> Senator, carry me. Thank you, Mr. President. It's on Rule 4. A senator must confine his observation to the subjects under discussion and may not introduce matter Point of order is sustained. Uh, let me thank uh, my distinguished colleagues for and uh, the nominee. Uh, it looks like you are a nationalist. So, opportunity. Uh, what do you think you will do to create more employment opportunities for the young Nigerians? First and foremost, Your Excellency, I'm humbled by coming from the distinguished senators of the Federal Republic about me. When I was running for governorship of Enugu State, unfortunately, Enugu State has 10% unemployment rates, unfortunately. Enugu State has an employment rate of 52.9%. Simply, what we, we are looking at from was to use agriculture in the state as the main area of employment. At the time, In every senatorial zone, if we can have up to uh, one square uh, square meters of I mean hectares of land, each of the zones with the type of agriculture that will, the zone will sustain, and as we are harvesting it. Like if we take rice, for instance, if we are doing rice, as we are harvesting the rice paddies, we are setting up the rice mill so that the paddies goes to the mill right away. And as you are bringing out rice from the mill, you are packaging, using some for our people, using, sending some for exports. If you do that way, both the primary and the secondary economy will be taken care of. And people will be employed heavily. You know, people will be employed heavily. Because agriculture is one of the greatest areas you can employ people to reduce unemployment. And part of the problem we are having is that in agriculture, when you, our people bring out the, the, the products, it is difficult to sell. Very difficult to sell. Because if you look at in an area, in a, Ostang, the civil center Ostang represents, the area called Aniri, they do a lot but because they don't have offtake, they don't have offtake, offtakers, it is difficult for them to make money. Trashing those okra, you know, but if you have offtakers, maybe government of taking it from them, you know, it will be easy for more people and more people getting uh, paid out of using uh, that's for every other area of agriculture. You know, once you have an offtake, if government has an industry that is taking the products, you know, more people will go into agriculture and our youths. of the zone as we talk, because if the youth are engaged, 
on how we can reduce employment. So this can be multiplied. Your, 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 <coughs> your area of concentration in job creation and associated uh, where you have um, uh, ag 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 uh, the, the of it, which is uh, production and the use of the agricultural products. So if you have associated micro, small and micro industries, uh, creating a situation of off-taking, where they become the off-taking, they produce those things that are taken make money in two ways also. Thank you for your contribution. You may not take about.